Right, that was another successful day out in the pea. All the con rods are still perfectly aligned and in their original location. Running sweet as a nut. Hasn't used any coolant, hasn't used any oil, absolutely hammered it all day long. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many laps I did, but it was a lot of laps. One thing uh, I was a bit annoyed about is that I had the alignment done. If you have been watching a while, you might remember when I took it to Thruxton and I took the tire temps as I was coming in off the track and then adjusted the camber to match the tire temp to try and get an even temperature across the tire, um, which seemed to work well. And then I was gonna take it to get it laser aligned just to make sure everything was sort of matching side to side. Then I was listening to a podcast about uh, suspension setup, tire setup and stuff. And it was saying on there that you actually want the inside of the tire hotter than the outside. So you would run more camber than you would think you would need based on your, your temperature across the tire. So when I took it for an alignment, I had a more like aggressive camber setting put in it. I went for the Boffy Racing recommended race settings, which was, uh, I think, three degrees at the front and two and a half at the back. It wasn't massively more than where I was. I think I was at like 2.4 or something at the front and just under two at the back. So I thought a bit more power, a bit more of a, like an aggressive setup might grip a bit better. And um, it definitely didn't. The front didn't feel much different, but you can see quite clearly that this has not even been using this outer edge of the tire and it's been wearing the inner edge. Um, more evident on the back. You can see there that sort of from that whole piece of tire there hasn't even been being used. So it had a very like, it just didn't have that really confidence inspiring feeling where you could just throw it in knowing it was gonna sort of hook in and go. And I didn't have the tools I needed at the track to um, make any changes to it. So I decided to just sort of drive it as it was. So I definitely need to reset that to uh, where it was, which uh, it's a bit annoying, but you gotta try these things. Could have been loads better, turns out it wasn't. Can always go back. I think the car speed-wise was running very similar times to my Mark II Escort. The Mark II Escort would do, was doing like 135 miles an hour down the straight. This was maxing out at 125 which i think power wise definitely the escort had a little bit more power definitely had more torque i would say but i think the the problem this car is always going to have is that like almost a vertical windscreen and like a completely flat front you know it's basically just a, a sort of brick trying to push itself through the air so um, I would say this car is definitely faster through the corners. So it was about three seconds a lap quicker with the turbo engine than it was um, with the throttle body setup. Not that I was timing on the day. That's what I've taken off my aim dash logger. So I can see what's what. To put that into perspective though, the minis, when I went to watch the minis racing at Castle Coombe, the front runners are going around in a 1 minute 16 with a 1300cc engine and I was only managing a 1 minute 19 with a, with a turbo and like 245 horsepower. So I think there's definitely uh, some work to be done with my driving. Yeah, I do think it's going to be a steep learning curve, but I like a steep learning curve. Um, what else? I've just booked my ARDS test, which is basically your motorsport driving test to be able to race in the UK. So I've got to go back to Castle Coombe in a couple of weeks for that. 
so that'll be another thing ticked off the list and then you know, I'll be a bit closer to going racing hopefully so yeah that's gonna be it for this one cheers for watching see you on the next one